welcome or welcome back to the Campus Ministry Show. I'm Father Logue, chaplain of Lancaster Catholic High School and host of the show. First and foremost, happy Easter. He is risen, the tomb is empty, Christos and Esti, and all of those good things. I want to talk a little bit today about the resurrection from a historical perspective. What do we know historically? What can we prove historically? What can we figure out historically? So, let's take a couple of the facts that we know for sure. The first is, Jesus was a real historical person. Some people will try to tell you the opposite. It's nonsense. No serious historian doubts that Jesus Christ actually existed. And even the most atheist of those historians will tell you the most certain thing we know about the historical person of Jesus is that he died on the cross. Everything else, we can argue about it, whatever. But that fact is pretty darn certain. So we take that. We know that Jesus died on the cross historically. There's a person named Jesus. He died. The Romans killed him. Another historical fact. People who claimed to be the followers of Jesus within a couple of decades after he died, starting right after he died and continuing on for 40 years or so, people who claim to know Jesus, be with Jesus, and have learned from him, those people all claimed that Jesus Christ rose from the dead and all of them were willing to die for that belief. That's also a historical fact and we have to do something with that. Whether or not they were telling the truth, whether or not they were right, we can't necessarily prove that from history. We don't necessarily have that in history, but we know that Jesus died and we know that his followers claimed, even to their own death, that he rose from the dead. So, what happened in the middle? What can we figure out? What kind of theories can explain what happened in the tomb Easter morning? There are a couple possibilities. Let's go through them. First and foremost, you could argue that nothing happened. Jesus died, was put in the tomb. Easter morning, the disciples start claiming this ridiculous story and just making up lies without any evidence. That's a problem though, because we have historical records that these disciples preached in Jerusalem and that the Jewish leaders and the Roman leaders didn't like them and didn't like their preaching. So if the apostles started to say, hey, remember that Jesus that you killed three days ago? He's risen from the dead and he hadn't actually risen from the dead and he was still in the tomb, then the Jewish leaders, the Roman leaders would say, uh, hey, go check the tomb, he's still there, obviously didn't rise from the dead. No one can be in the tomb. The tomb has to be empty for this to make any sense at all, for it to catch on at all, for anyone to believe this. And we know that they made thousands of converts in and around Jerusalem when they could easily have been proved wrong if he were still in the tomb. So, Jesus died, they believed he, or they claimed he rose from the dead, and the tomb was really empty. Now what could have happened? First and foremost, some people claim that Jesus survived crucifixion, that he was barely alive and then he maybe crawled out of the tomb on his own. I don't know how seeing a, a bloody, beat up, barely living guy who barely survived an execution would make anyone think, wow, God raised him from the dead. And how would he move the stone if he had barely survived? Also, the Romans were really good at killing people. They knew how to do it. They had it down to a science. They didn't really make mistakes like that, especially not in a high profile case like this where there was risk of rebellion. What else could have happened? If possible, the Romans or the Jewish authorities could have moved the body and then the disciples thought he rose from the dead. But that doesn't make any sense either because as soon as the disciples started to claim it, the Romans or Jewish authorities who had moved him would have produced the body and said, uh, obviously not, we moved him, here's, here's the body. Also, why would they move the body? They didn't want it moved, they wanted it to stay put. The other theory is that the Christians stole the body. That the disciples broke in, they knocked out the guards, they moved the stone, they stole the body, and then they made up this whole lie about Jesus actually rising from the dead. That has a couple problems too. First and foremost, these are the guys who were too scared to be near Jesus when he was dying. These are the guys, most of whom didn't even watch him die on the cross. They were afraid for their own lives. They ran, they denied him, all of this. Now suddenly that he's dead, they're willing to take all these risks and die for him? It doesn't make any sense. It also doesn't make sense that it's a lie because, as I said, they claimed this and continued to claim this for 40 years as they were persecuted, beat up, exiled, shipwrecked, um, put through all this stuff and, and eventually almost all of them put to death and not one of them on their own, thousands of miles from home, facing their own, the end of their own lives, not one of them broke and said, 
ah, we made it all up, I deny it. All of them were willing to die. That doesn't make any sense. Now there's another possibility, and that is hallucination. They all went crazy. That also has some problems. First of all, they all claimed to have seen the same thing. They said we were all in the room and we all saw Jesus. You don't really have group shared hallucinations like that where everyone has the same vision and has the same experience. That doesn't really make sense. Also, if they were crazy and they were believing things because they were crazy, how did they convince people to follow them? How did they convince a lot of people to follow them? Why wouldn't people be able to smell the crazy on them and say, oh, these guys are a little nutso, I don't want anything to do with them. So the disciples probably weren't all crazy. And again, they would have to, every single one of them be crazy and every single one of them never, you know, come back to their senses. The other possibility is that they were deceived. They were tricked into thinking that Jesus had risen from the dead. That's tricky too. Who did it? Who caused it? Who orchestrated the trick? Were, what, like I said, did Jesus possibly survive? That doesn't really make sense. Did someone else die in Jesus' place and Jesus did this kind of magic trick to convince them? Again, that's kind of confusing, especially because the evidence that the disciples claimed were things like, we saw Jesus on the cross, now we see him alive. We saw the wounds in his hands, we saw the wound in his side. I don't know how someone in the first century fakes that and convinces people that that's the case. Also, why would Jesus do this? If he's a trickster, what does he hope to gain? Normally when people try to trick someone and, and convince someone to believe something that's supernatural, that they have supernatural powers, it's in order to get something from them. It's in order to, you know, gain their support and their money and their fame and all of this stuff. If Jesus really tricked all the disciples to believe that he rose from the dead somehow and then just vanished from the scene and made himself scarce, why would he do that? He couldn't be crazy or he wouldn't have been able to trick them. And if he was sane, then what was he trying to gain from it? So, the reason I want to dive into all those different theories is because all of them have some pretty big flaws. All of them really don't make sense. And I think the most logical explanation as to why all of these disciples, to their very last breath through torture and all of this hardship, taught and claimed and adamantly proclaimed that Jesus rose from the dead, I think the most logical explanation is that they really saw Jesus risen from the dead. But the bottom line is, we know with historical certainty that Jesus died on the cross. We know with historical certainty that his followers claimed to have seen him resurrected. And we know from logic that there's no natural explanation that really makes total sense. So either there's something that's escaping us, or Jesus is who he says he, he was. And the disciples were accurate in their claims. Either way, this is a question that we should try to figure out the answer to because if the disciples are right, then it impacts everything. So, in this season of Easter, look back on this and take these claims seriously because we can't just dismiss them. They're not something that we can just toss aside and ignore. We have to wrestle with them, we have to grapple with them, we have to do something with these extraordinary claims. And I think the best thing, the most logical thing we can do is believe them. So, from all of us here at Lancaster Catholic, happy and blessed Easter. Thanks for watching.